Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is to be able to come together on another Sunday morning to share with you the Word of God virtually. I'm Reverend Ivan Carter. I am superintendent of CUC. Um, uh, Christians under construction. Some know it as Sunday school of the uh, where Sister Priscilla Smith serves as assistant superintendent and Reverend Brandon A. Blake serves as senior pastor of the new Sunday Mount uh, Missionary Baptist Church. And before we go any further, let's pause uh, for a word of prayer. Gracious Father, again, we just say thank you. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, and thank you for this another day. Thank you for your gift of technology and that we may be able to come and share and study your word. Again, I ask and pray that uh, our, our minds and our hearts will be open to your word, that we may receive it and apply it to our day-to-day -day living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have a very nice, a very good lesson uh, for us uh, today. Today we're going to go to the Luke's Gospel, uh, Luke's, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through um, 11. And your, for your devotional reading, uh, uh, will be Luke chapter 9, uh, verses 57 through 62. And uh, it would, um, and we're going, I'm going to read the King James uh, translation. Now, as we go through our lesson, I may at times refer to the New Living Translation uh, as well. So Luke chapter 5, beginning verse 1, it reads as follows in the King James translation. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the, the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. So our title of our lesson today is called to significance. And the, and the words that we, there are two words that we will should know out of the lesson today. One is master. So that is teacher, uh, the, emphasizing the teacher's position of respect. And then there is beckon, that is to signal by the nodding of one's of of one's head. And the outline uh, for our lesson uh, today, we see the in Luke 1 through 3, we have the teaching, and verses 4 through 7, we have the miracle, and verses 8 through 11, we see the 
uh, the commitment. So here, if we look at Luke provides a very um, Luke provides a very detailed uh, explanation of the preparation of Jesus' ministry. At first, we encounter the religious leaders when he was um, twelve, and we see that in two uh, forty-one through fifty. Then we see the public ministry of John the Baptist. We see that in chapter three, one through twenty-two. We see the temptation, Satan's grueling temptation of Jesus. We see that in four, one through thirteen, and then Jesus teaches with authority. Uh, we see that in four thirty-one to forty-one. And then Jesus preaches in Galilee. We see that in 42 and 44. So here his ministry at this time began to, it, it began to, uh, to turn. And as he started gathering his disciples who would uh, shadow him and, uh, and they're being prepared to carry on his ministry after his uh, de departure. And so I believe this was the beginning of Christian discipleship. See, this was the model used uh, for students today as they mentor those who would become uh, teachers. So notice the, the concept here. Now, you may know, I may use the word notice a lot. So notice the concept here. God uses sinners for the propagation of uh, the gospel. So when Jesus uh, chose his disciples, he chose men who were markedly imperfect. So we look at uh, Luke uh, 5, uh, 1 and 2 here. Um, Luke, uh, Luke, 1, Luke 5 and 1 says, And it came to pass that the, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood at the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the, by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing uh, their nets. So Jesus attra attracted a lot of uh, attention and the text says they pressed again upon him to see and to hear him so this uh, event it took place at the Sea of Galilee and it was a, a body of water that had um, several names uh, it was also called the Lake of Gennesaret um, because of its fertile plain and Gennesaret lies along the north side northwest side of, of the lake. We see that in 14 uh, and 34. Um, and then also it is called Generoth uh, in, in Joshua 12 and 3, and it's also called the Sea of uh, Tiberias in John 6 and 1, and 21 and 1. So the people were crowding around him to hear the word of God. Um, and it has been said, I've read, it said they, they pressed upon him so close that they were about to push Jesus into the water. So here Jesus, he made a determination to make a change in uh, the situation and notice the empty boats that were, the empty fishing boats that were not being used. And the fishermen of work had been done for the night and they were in the process of cleaning um, their, their nets and at this point, the fishermen are now, the fishermen are not named, but soon we will find out. Uh, their nets uh, were mostly bell-shaped, and they had weights around, around their, uh, their edges. So in verse 2 here, the two boats, uh, they worked in teams. The nets were thrown flat in, onto the water, and the weights would cause the nets to fall over uh, the fish. And the fishermen will nets will pull the nets to the surface uh, into their uh, boats, and there was maintenance on uh, the nets that had to be done. They had to be cleaned. They had to be free of, of of weeds and and mended and dried and stretched after each uh, use. Uh, and so the New Living Translation said he noticed the two empty uh, boats on the water's edge. So they were up all night, and their work was what? It was fruitless. And they were possibly preparing to go back out the next night with, with what? Uncertain results. Now, you think about that in, in today's 
uh, in today's time, uh, they were uh, going missing, they, they were unlikely results, it was fruitless. So that would be like missing a day's pay in, in today's time. And a lot of us could not uh, handle the effect of missing a, a day's pay. So look here, they, notice the activity now of the, the, the fishermen. Uh, it shows their, I believe it shows that if we study, it shows their commitment to uh, their work. And this is what Jesus needed from them, uh, needed from them. And so here, look at five and uh, five and three. It says, and he entered unto one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and sat down and talked to people out of, out of uh, the ship. All right, and so here, here, Luke five and and three, perhaps in order to keep from being pushed into the water, Jesus stepped into one of the boats that was owned by Simon Peter, and Jesus requested that Simon push the boat out into uh, into the water. See, Peter, I believe he was. Uh, acquainted with Jesus. Why do we say that? Because remember back in Luke 4, 38-39, Jesus healed um, Simon's mother-in-law. And see, and Jesus often performed acts of compassion when he was teaching. And, and perhaps uh, this added to his, his reputation as one who, had, one who had power and one who has mercy. So if we continue to look at Luke 5 and 3, this made an indelible mark on Peter. So he was not reluctant to allow Jesus to, what, use his boat as he taught uh, the crowd. So now Jesus, he's out in the water, uh, and this what is what happens here. This position it takes the pressure uh, of the crowd off of Jesus, and he and they could hear him clearly. They could hear what he had to say. So the text says he sat down and began. He sat down and began uh, to to teach. Not a seated position or a seated posture. Uh, Jesus assumed the position of a rabbi see and he was making it clear right here i believe that he had the authority to teach uh the crowd now in the text we are not told uh the context of the message of this occasion and perhaps it wasn't so much about the message but it was about what jesus was going uh to do so if we continue to look at five and three uh jesus went about to choose his disciples and they needed to know he had the right uh, credentials so look at verse 4 again now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon launch into the deep and let down your nets for a drought so we can, you can highlight launch um, let down and drought let's look at those here for a minute so uh, to establish his authority, Jesus gave Peter the simple command, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drought. So a drought means to haul, to pull, to haul in, um, to haul in um, the fish. So Jesus ha could have a, Jesus right here, uh, he could have explained uh, uh, to the fishermen. Could have, explained, could have explained, excuse me, who he was to the fishermen, but decided to prove through a miracle. He said, he told Simon, "Launch out! Launch out!" is singular, and then he said, "Let down your nets," which is plural. This is to, to suggest that Simon is the captain of the boat and he takes his team out to put down their their nets but still in chapter look still in verse 4 see the nets were you the nets now keep in mind 
um, the nets were made of linen, uh, which would be visible to the fish in the daytime. And see, cooler water could, uh, could hold more oxygen for the fish to breathe, so they would be more active in the water at nighttime when it was cooler. This is why they fished at night. So therefore, uh, to let, uh, for the nets to be able to catch fish in the daytime, it was a real miracle. So in Luke 5, we see here, uh, it says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down uh, the net. So here Peter begins his response. Notice he begins his response with the, the calling him master. Now this word is used by Luke here in the New Testament and it always comes from the mouths of the disciples. It, it also can refer to a commander or a, or a teacher. So still in Luke 5. So I believe we can safely say here that Simon had a relationship uh, of some, of, with Jesus, and he had just heard the, the, the rabbi teach and, and had, a, some, had respect for him. So notice now again, notice Peter had a small objection here. Uh, they had worked all night and did not catch a thing. So what was Peter suggesting here in this objection, it will be useless to try again, and they had and they had just cleaned um, their nets. See, Peter had respect for Jesus, and the New Living Translation says, "But if you say so, I'll let my nets down again." So now, just remember now uh, that uh, at this moment, Peter. Uh, may have recalled what Jesus did. He had just he, he had just healed his his mother-in-law, and maybe Peter realized something special. There was something special. Maybe he realized there was something powerful about Jesus that made him listen, even though it was uh, inconsistent. So in inconvenient. I'm, I apologize. Maybe Peter realized that he was. Um, saying something special, and Jesus, uh, uh, he was saying something, Jesus was special, and he was powerful, and it, it, it made him le listen. Eventually, it was inconvenient. Now look at, at um, 6 and 7. It says, When they had done, when, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckon unto their partners, and which were in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled with both ships, so that they beckoned, so they began to sink. So now we see a great difference from the beginning of the passage. The two boats now are beginning to sink. Notice what happens when they so notice what happens when they act upon the commands of God. It will bring the unexpected. It will bring the unexpected. See their their, their nets begin to tear and they begin to sink. They're so filled with fish. And so when we look at this word beckon in uh, verse seven again, it means simply the nodding of the head. So what is significant here? What is this suggesting? The catch of fish, it was so tremendous and their hands were so full and they were so busy pulling in the nets, they had to nod their heads to the other to the other boats. So here now uh, and Peter a practical point in six and seven, a practical point here, six and seven, through faith, we understand that limits we impose on ourselves do not apply to God. That's a good point. Through faith, we understand that the limits we impose on ourselves 
do not apply to God. So we look at verse 8 here. It says, When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So here, when Peter saw the evidence of, of the Peter saw the evidence of the awesome power of God in Jesus. His, I believe here, his um, his awareness. It was elevated, and 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 that caused him to recognize his own sinfulness, to recognize his own uh, unworthiness, and he did what. He asked the Lord to depart from him, to, to leave him. So Simon sees Jesus as what? He sees him, believe he sees him as the anointed one of God. He healed his mother-in-law in Luke 4, 38, and Jesus, had, Jesus has power over this situation. And Simon is now brought on the, uh, under the conviction that he is a sinful man. And we see other places, other people, other places in uh, the Bible with the same reaction as Simon. Look at the, remember when uh, in Isaiah uh, saw God high and lifted up. We see that in Isaiah six one through five. It says one thing he could say. The only thing he could say was, "Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips." From for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So notice the title change. You notice the title change. And in verse 5, he said, Master. But in this verse, he used the title Lord. So we, 5 and 8, we, conti we continue here for a moment. So one other observation here. Simon was amazed that Jesus cared about their day-to-day -day routine, uh, their everyday needs. Let's say that again. In one other observation, Simon was amazed that Jesus cared about their their day-to-day -day, uh, routine. He cared about their everyday needs. And see, God, God is, yes, he's interested in saving us, yes, but also helping us, helping us in our daily activities. So look at, at, at 5 and 10. As for he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken, and, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So here um, we, in this, we, have, we have Simon, we have James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and they are amazed. So here, a point here, I think is a good point. Uh, despite Peter's request, Jesus did not leave. Despite Peter's request, Jesus did not need to leave. Peter realized he was a sinner and Jesus will never walk away. Jesus will never walk away from anyone who reaches this realization. So look at 9 and 10, we continue here. At this point, Jesus saw in Peter exactly what he wanted in his disciples. See here, and what, this is a good point here. For all of us to know, Jesus is not looking for perfect people to serve him. Jesus is not looking for perfect people uh, to serve him. He is after those who are aware of their uh, shortcomings and aware of their unworthiness, but they are willing what? Willing to boldly to, to, to respond to the challenge of faith. Jesus is not looking for uh, perfect people. He's after those who are aware of their shortcomings, 
who are aware of their unworthiness, their worthlessness, the unworthiness, but who are willing to and boldly to respond to the challenge of faith. And Simon, Simon uh, he uh, exhibits a willingness, a willingness to learn. He knows he is sinful. He knows he is lacking, but obeys what? He obeys the master's voice. And one point, other point, observation here, uh, Jesus calms Simon's fear. He changes the direction and they become fisher of men. They become fisher of people. Now verse 11, uh, let's look at this for a moment. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and follow him. So in this verse, they have reached dry land and these men are convinced, I believe, Jesus will meet their needs. So after Jesus had established the authority, his authority in the synagogue, he, he healed the sick, he drove out demons, and, he, and here he established his authority in their lives. And see, he met them, here's, you can highlight this right here. What did Jesus do? He met them on their level and help them with their work. He met them on their level. Now here's one point when I, I read this, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to run around uh, the, uh, the room. Let's look at this for uh, a moment. Let's, let's, let us reflect on uh, the Jewish boys uh, for a moment. See, all Jewish, first point here, all Jewish boys went to school to learn the Torah. If a student showed promise, he would be invited to keep studying the, uh, the prophets. But if, he, but if not, he went, he went home to learn the family tree. Stay with me. If a student showed promise in studying uh, the prophets, he was invited to honor. To, to, he was invited to honor uh, and further study uh, of the poetic writings of the Hebrew Bible. But if the boy did not seem bright enough to keep studying, he would be sent back home to learn the family tree. Point three here: If the student showed promise after learning the Torah, uh, the prophets, and the writings, a rabbi would simply say. Follow me. And the student would never turn down the great honor of studying under a rabbi. Well, what, so what's going on here? Simon and his friends, they're, they're going about the family trade, fishing, the day Jesus performed the miracle. What does this suggest to us? At some point in their education, they were told they were not gifted enough to continue. No rabbi wanted them. At some point in their education, they were told they were not gifted enough to continue and no rabbi would want them. But Here's the blessing. This rabbi Jesus came to them and invited them to be his student. Here's the blessing. The rabbi Jesus came to them and invited them to be his students. Here's the closing thought. Jesus doesn't care about what the world says about you or how the world has evaluated you. He knows our hearts and calls those who will follow him. I want to repeat that, even though I know you can, you, you can, you can, you can move back and listen to it again. Jesus does not care about what the world says about you or how the world has evaluated you. He knows our hearts and calls those who will follow him. Thank you for this time. Um, actually, the uh, it's a wonderful lesson, 
And I pray God's blessings upon you, continue blessings upon you today and the days to come. Let us close with prayer. Gracious Father, again, we said thank you. Thank you for your word and thank you for this time. And thank you for your, your, your darling son, Jesus. I ask you to continue uh, your blessing upon um, our listeners and, and the blessing upon Pastor Blake as he continues to stand behind the sacred desk to preach your word. Give him what to say and how to say it and the power to preach that your word will go out across the airwaves and hearts and minds will be encouraged. Be with us through the, the weeks, the days to come, that we may come together again to share and study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.